In the middle of the podcast, mid-breath, mid-cough, Chris's drink will run out, and so shall Mike's within minutes. Sometimes, the only thing Paul has in life is a weird low-budget movie that he found at Dollar Tree. These were Jay's salad days, or at least his hot ham and cheese days. And now, together on Gchat, we could tell the tale of the land of college prophets in the land of B Movie Movie Mania. Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Can we? Is anybody going to... Well, hello there. (laughs) You have something you want to say? No. (laughs) (laughs) Hello there. Good evening. Good day. How are you? Welcome to another episode of B-Movie Mania. I am your host for the evening, Paul A. Brooks. And can I just tell you how happy I am to be hosting tonight? I am as happy... I don't know, guys. What what would you? How, how happy do you think I am right now? A manatee with a Big Mac. No, not quite. Uh, an an otter no. with a zebra cake. Nah, getting there. Close. You look like a lion doing a bit. <laughs> what? Col- what? <laughs> colder. Not not quite. <laughs> God damn it, guys! I'm as happy. As a dolphin eating a hot dog, because we watched a film (laughs) called The Land of College Prophets, and I'm here to tell you all about it with my co-hosts, Mr. Jason Halls, (gasps) Mr. Mike Hayes, Uh, um, hey, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Well, hello. Guys, how's everybody doing tonight? I want to get uh, some drink checks with everybody. What are you drinking? Uh, I have iced tea. Gold Peak iced tea. It's a nice, hey, looking, nice looking solo cup, though. Thanks. Uh, I, I've got a body double IPA from Columbus Brewing Company that was brought to me by the uh, B-Movie Maniac listeners, Molly and Eric. Oh, very nice. Ooh. Shout out. Yeah. Chris? Well, Paul, as you can tell by these clinkies, I'm drinking an ice cold vodka lemonade. Hey, not bad. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> Paul, what are you doing? Paul, what are you getting up to over there? Uh, I got a Shirley Temple right here. Pretty good. <laughs> 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 Fucking goddamn it. Uh, mm. All right. We have a lot to discuss. Um, There's been like five inside jokes and we haven't even started the movie yet. Well, you know, I mean, I, th- I think this is this is... I know that we've said this with various movies, but for real, real... This is one that you have to see before you listen to this podcast, or you're just going to have no idea what we're talking about. I don't think we know what we're going to be talking about. (laughs) Correct. So, (laughs) the the sort of backstory for me on this is that I was at a Dollar Tree, gosh, I don't know, 2010, 2011 maybe, in Chicago when I lived with you, Mike. Mm Mm-hmm. And there was that Dollar Tree on Clybourne that, for whatever reason... Uh, They had the slim case DVDs for sale, Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. was always just weird shit. And I found this movie, along with several others that you hate, at that Dollar Tree. (laughs) And Ironbound Vampire? (laughs) No, Ironbound. uh, Salvation came from there. Oh, God. Yeah. And a lot of other weird shit. Hey, Mike, is that the Dollar Tree you got the Fago from for the uh, Insane Clown Posse movie? (laughs) <laughs> no, that is not actually where I got it. Oh. I got it at a dollar store, the Fago. All right, let's get into this, guys, with some quick takes. Quick takes! Chris Hudson, what do you got? All right, well, I guess I'm going to beat everyone else to this one, but Land of College Profits, it's not sexy. 
That's just not sexy. <laughs> now that's for me, boy. And that's just not sexy. Jay, what do you got to say about the land of college profits? Paul asked me for a quick take. Mm-hmm. But asking for a quick take on the land of college profits was like asking the water not to be wet. Mm. <laughs> I saw this movie years ago, but until now, I ignored it like a fart in an elevator. <laughs> But I knew this reunion would happen someday. After my second viewing, I walked the streets for hours. I enjoyed some shawarma and meditated in the Goodwill parking lot. I thought about the nature of man and where the land of college profits fits in. Then I realized that sometimes using a lot of words is a poor substitute for simply saying, I loved it. <laughs> you know, that was, Richard, that was maybe not... You want a, you want a muffin? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Hayes. Uh, I guess while, while I, I really enjoy the mythos in this film um, and other things about it, um, I get why some people might hate this movie. Hmm. Okay. okay. Can I can I speak to that real quick because I've been on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. So the, my introduction to this movie. And actually, you too, Chris. Um, you, Paul, you brought this over years ago, probably. To your place. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. And didn't really tell us what it was. And we have been drinking, like, a lot. Oh, my God. And we put this thing on, and we were <laughs> so like, much. what is going on? What is this? <laughs> like, I I just, I'm no like, idea. no. No, no, no. <laughs> and I just couldn't get over it. But, I don't know. Like, coming to it another time, and just giving it another view in a, in a fair environment... I really did love it. I got to admit, I, I don't wow. know if we've had a movie on this podcast that I, my feelings have swung so far from one side to the other simply by viewing it two times. Huh. Well, perspective is everything, I guess. Does that surprise you, Paul? Did you expect me to hate it? No, I mean, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to hear you say that. And, and honestly, I'm not all that surprised by it because I think there's a lot to love in this weird little low-budget independent movie that some dudes made uh, in Connecticut. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the Land of College Profits is the name of the film, and it was directed not just by one person, but by a group of guys from Connecticut called the Hale Manor Collective. I think there's some kind of group mind all working together, communicating telepathically. Yeah, it's a hive mind. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So in the opening credits, we're introduced to uh, many of the main characters. And Mike, why don't you walk <laughs> oh me boy. through some of the people that we see here in the opening credits? Actually, this is perfect because I do have a flow chart of Ooh. people that I made while watching it the, the, the third time. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, a flow chart? I have a flow chart. Um, All right, that's so, a, that's an image that we'll be putting on bmoviemania.com later not, on. It's not a very good flowchart. I mean, this is a pretty <laughs> <laughs> This is a very complicated um, intro, so I'm glad Mike So so basically they introduce the 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 narrator who turns out to be a guy named Tommy introduces the college prophets uh, from this college in this town. Uh, we meet a guy named Rye, who is Tommy's friend. Uh, we see Tommy at some point. Tommy's dressed as a priest, though he is not Catholic. He makes sure we know. Yeah, not just the priest, but he's, he's dressed as a priest with the sleeves torn off. And a chain hanging and around it, his neck. Yeah. Yeah. I Wait, what do you mean? That's Well, I don't know what kind of church what a you priest grew up in, like? Mike. Yeah, it's been a while for Mike, but that's okay. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I've seen angels and demons. I know what priests dress like. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, so we also meet Jonah Joe, who's this Irish guy. He's an enemy of Tommy and Rye, we find out, but he is still a college prophet, apparently. Um, and he's just not sexy. No, we also meet Third Reich Jones, who I can't <laughs> decide if he was a college prophet or just a, a big old buffoon dude. I I laughed like that I think was the first moment sorry to interrupt you Mike like that was the first moment at going through this again very early in the movie where I saw his name and and I totally forgot his name was Third Reich Jones and I don't know and that just hit me the right way or something I thought that was so funny well I think it's important huh. I think it's important to say that he is going to this college to learn English as a second language this is true yes. 
Correct. Uh, it, 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 we find out later in the film that th- they believe that he was made by the Nazis after <laughs> World War II. Yeah, um, that's the name. <laughs> So there's that. Uh, we also meet a, a, a duo named Million and Billy, and they are like subordinates to Jonah Joe. Uh, we meet Tim, who's not quite a prophet, but they all knew he was going to be there someday. Uh, and then at the beginning, we also meet Midas, who is a college prophet, though doesn't claim to believe anything they all believe in, but they all know he's a college prophet. He's also the, the uh, campus security guard. You gotta, you gotta yes. say that the, the the head of security. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's just that's just the opening credits, literally. So <laughs> wait, you've got bells. <laughs> yeah. She's not in the beginning. Yes, she is. No, she's not. She's in the opening she's credits. The opening. She yes, is me. not in the opening credits. Okay. Well, Paul, post a still of bells yes. from the opening credits down below on <laughs> bmoviemania.com. You'll find her later. She's not in the opening. I remember them distinctly because they they set it up like that to almost give you the impression that they're that they're sort of low level superheroes. Oh sure, it reminded me of like I'm playing Mortal Kombat and I'm yeah. like looking at all the characters that I can select from. See, I was exactly. I was going to say yeah. Street Fighter, but to each his own. Yeah, sure. You really they really drop you into this movie as if you're supposed to know this mythos that is there. But yes. At no point is it explained <laughs> to you really. Like you kind of get you start getting the feel of it, but you they, you, they drop you in. And it, it really gives it a rich feeling in a way. Like, I don't think you're ever drowning. It's confusing. But I, don't, I never felt, at least, like I was drowning in confusion. Just, this is weird. Okay, I guess this guy <laughs> is this guy. Rye and I attended Robinson College. It was a small community college at the center of the town of Pharisee. It was a positive place. And I guess in the end, we hoped some of that would rub off onto us. But it never did. You know, you mentioned how uh, this was your salad days, Jay. I would say that the narration of this movie is more like the goddamn word salad days. <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> heavy. I think Paul likes movies that have a lot of voiceover. In them. I guess maybe that's true. Maybe I need to uh, analyze myself a little bit on that front. <laughs> um, but yeah, as Mike pointed out, there's this notion uh, that this story that we're watching is really just one of many stories in the sort of saga of college prophets and the way that they allude to the other stories is interesting. You've got all these other things like the Pharisee stalemate. Oh yeah. You've got the Mm -hmm. fall of silence, uh, third Reich Jones backstory, all this weird stuff. And like Mike said, I think it's cool that they, they sort of immediately make you feel like the world is very rich. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they talk about how Rye, the, like, they talk about how tough he is, Tommy's buddy Rye, who, by the way, is dressed in a military outfit. <laughs> but you come to find out, and this is a big point for me where I also, this is a thing I really liked. You come to find out he just works at a military themed restaurant. So that's why he wears. Wait a minute, what? His, yeah. yeah, that's why <laughs> he wears that all that military gear. I missed that. Sergeant Sergeant Cluckers or something, I thought. I wrote it down further on. Rye worked 60 hours a week at a military-themed restaurant called Sergeant Poultry's. It served delectable dishes like navy bean soup and sloppy joes. I never ate there. Yeah, so so he you think, oh, he's like the Mortal Kombat military guy, but really he works at a chicken restaurant that's themed with the military, and so he's always wearing his work outfit. Week. Yeah. 70 hours a week. <laughs> He's so there a lot. Great. That's great. Mike, I don't know how do you miss I that. I don't know either. I mean, this movie's dense. It you is. Know? It's it really very is. dense. It, it reads like it's. you, you get dropped into Moby Dick, and you, you remember half of the stuff right out the room that, that Melville describes, but you forget the other half. Did you just compare the land of college prophets to Moby <laughs> Dick? <laughs> yeah. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. I guess that's what we're here to find out. I was technically comparing the density of the film to the density of Herman Melville's writing style. Okay. He's very very descriptive and tells you a lot of things you don't need to know and it kind of fills the page a lot. Right. One okay, another thing at the very beginning <laughs> I really enjoyed was the battle and what I was going to say earlier, the battle between Third Reich Jones and Rye because right. Third Reich Jones is the only guy that Rye can't beat. That's an important mm-hmm. plot point. And they True. fought for 7 hours and nobody well, won. Well, <laughs> that's what happens. That's what happens when you're a World War II German experiment. It was understandable why Rye couldn't beat Jones. Townsman believed he was engineered by the Nazis before the Second World War, and that he's a hundred years old. Uh, Chris, question for you. Yes, the physics in this movie uh, make a lot more sense than they did in Fantastic uh, Four. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to the <laughs> physics. 
but a lot of the a lot of the guys uh, in Pharisee, a lot of the college prophets, if you will, really like to fight. Uh, why is that? Why is that? Yeah, I never quite caught why. It's just this whole like brotherhood of college prophets that just it's like Fight Club. I guess you don't talk about it in a movie. They're they're just jerks. They're all jerks. That's why <laughs> <laughs> they don't like each other. I think it's because some people may have saw Boondock Saints and liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, somebody in, in, in 2002 had a double feature night of Boondock Saints and Fight Club, and we're, and we're like, yeah. After playing some Street Fighter 2, and you gotta, we gotta do that. I can identify with this angst. Um, Chris, I know that you're also big into uh, Professor Holiday, so tell me a little bit about... Uh, <laughs> why, why, why? Wait, why do you think that, Paul? Well, you know, he mentioned physics earlier, and oh, okay. so I thought maybe he might have something to say about the science of the movie. I mean, yeah, I think the the physics lesson made a lot more sense uh, in this movie than it did in the Fantastic Four until, well, until I noticed two things. One, he started talking about <laughs> karma and how that relates to physics. Everything that you do affects everything else. So both Newton's law... And the law of karma are related, and this is how. If you perform an unskillful cause, born out of evil intentions, Newton's law and the law of karma says, prepare yourself, because you're going to have to suffer the consequences. And, <laughs> and two, when you look at his chalkboard, it just says crap like Jimmy slept with Norma, and and quarter pound sausage. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah, there was a food order. Yeah. So I'm beginning to think that Professor Holiday does not really know what he's talking about. Uh, he might not, but goddamn, if that wasn't funny, I so I caught I didn't catch that until I was watching it for this podcast. I'm like, what does that say about sausage right there? Uh, but he's he's buds with uh, Tommy and Rye, and and some of his. Uh, scientific knowledge is going to come into play later. <laughs> Wait, that's that's scientific in quotes, right? Like scientific knowledge. Well, in this universe, I think it is scientific because in this universe, they even mentioned later that someone else was was uh, like a mathematician, but also like had magic in their math, Robinson, which we also find Robinson out later Red? that they're doing. Yeah, yeah, but like I think that's just part of this universe is that math and stuff like that oh, doesn't. Oh, it's I, not like we like, know it. All you gotta say, Golden Age comic rules. That's all you gotta say. <laughs> I'm good to go now. Well, you know, I think it is interesting that they really before it was popular because obviously it's all the rage now. But this movie came out in 2005, and they did a really good job of world building, of feeling like you know you're entering this entire universe of college products. Also, yeah, I think I think I'll go ahead, Mike. <laughs> no, nah, mine was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I just wanted to add, like in a. It's kind of part of the world building they've they've got going on here. I mean, it, the world really does feel big, and it's even bigger when you see dogs wearing sunglasses. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Ugh. Why wouldn't dogs wear sunglasses yeah. in this world? Well, apparently that means they're assholes. I guess <laughs> no, yeah. that just proves extra. The characters with the dogs is this couple that have these dogs, <laughs> and they seem to be innocent and do nothing. But the fucking protagonists of this movie hate them to with <laughs> for no good reason so much. for no good it's reason. very confusing yeah, that might be another you know uh, uh chapter that we get in the in the college prophet saga down the line is what's going on with them and you know they they, they own that slaughterhouse on the edge of town so maybe something is f fishy is. is going on with that <laughs> who knows but eventually the dean's going to want to expel the both of you and i still don't agree with what you did to the ridleys come on the Ridley's own that slaughterhouse on the edge of town. Speaking of other stories, Paul, I w would also like the like prequel film about Robinson Red, the the person oh, they yes. named the college after, because the, the little tidbit of information about him we hear about, he's described as many considered him a madman, right? But they still named a college after him, and I'm like, give me that tasty morsel, please. Yes, but you also find out later that he went through. A lot of the stuff that the that the college prophets go through within this film, almost a Battlestar Galactica, all this has happened before yeah, yeah. sort of scenario. Wait, was so that, I'm with you on that. Was that his book in Gaelic that they read at the end? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't catch that it was his. Yeah, okay. There's a giant machine in the earth of my castle. 
shake its hand and will provide nourishment to those infected by the spell of the land. Does that mean something to you? Yeah, it sounds like, sounds like Robinson went through what we're going through. Can we talk about the street preaching a little bit? Yes, Chris, please. Let's. I mean, they are college prophets, so that would make they sense. Oh, this, yeah. this is where the movie started to click for me this time around. Oh, yeah. they <laughs> actually are in. prophets. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> Get a couple melt crates. That's yeah, all you need, really. Buck- bucket of blood and a crazy message. <laughs> they seem to preach against um, vegetarianism. Yes. <laughs> You, but yeah, let's put a clip in here, right, right, right here of uh, their sermon, if you God will. God would not be made of cheese. If God was personified, he'd be made of red meat. I say eating red meat brings us closer to God. He would not be made of cheese. But this brings me to um, uh, our ch- our our college's chief security guard, who we have mentioned already. His name is Midas. And he is in charge of kind of keeping Tommy and Rye in check on, on campus. Uh, but Jay, Midas has a certain amount of respect for the prophets, does he not? He does. And there he's in the unenviable position of having to enforce the evil dean's rules. But also he kind of, I think, grudgingly respects Rye and Tommy and there's a very specific rule when the when the goons start like his his goon squad starts to fight Tommy and Rye, um, he gets very mad at his own people because Rye never tries to hit them so they don't hit Rye. Rye never tries to hit us so we never try to hit Rye. Got it? Next time you pull a stunt like that, I'll let him have you. They have these little rules and stuff, you know, and this respect amongst each other. And Mike, I think you were the one who pointed out earlier that Midas might actually be a, a college prophet himself. So there's there's some a certain amount of unity there. Yeah, they they mentioned like in that opening thing that he is one, but he doesn't believe anything yeah. they say. Like kind of a yeah. weird thing. Uh, and Chris, I know you've been wanting to talk about this. I know you're a big fan of Belle, so tell me a little about. Uh, <laughs> Our heroine of the film, Bells. Uh, she is the standard hot chick of the movie, which kind of the uh, the falling out between the friends happens because of her. So sad. That's all I've got to say about it. Yes. I just can't stop thinking about Bells. Hey, Bells, fuck studying tonight. Let's hang out. I can't. Jesus, why do you have to make everything so fucking difficult? I just want to hang out. Tomorrow. Yeah, she's being she's being a real jerk by like studying instead of hanging out. Well, I think there was oh, something God. else going on besides studying. If you catch my drift, they Hey-o. were they were studying oh. some anatomy. Would you say, Jay? Oh. oh. <laughs> Segue directly into my next note. Uh, we get a scene here where Tommy catches bells, having what might be a fish and chips dinner with Rye oh. and. Uh, Tommy, you know, Tommy sees this and and immediately challenges Rye to a brawl. Uh, oh, yeah. Mike, where oh, yeah. where does this challenge, uh, where is this challenge going to ha- happen at? Because this is a central part of our film here. Oh well, the, the, he challenged him to go fight about the well that ate children. Yes. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, he went to <laughs> ch- he challenged to fight him, Paul, fight like physical contact uh, at the well that ate children. <laughs> Brawl by the well. I don't know that we've really sold the fact that this movie is low budget, right? Yes. Like, it's super low budget. But despite that, you can tell we all kind of have a like for it because they have a lot of charm. And some of that low budget charm to me is stuff like when Tommy goes over and he confronts Rye and Bells, he, like, punches the table And the table breaks apart, but it's just this kind of like awkward break. And the whole table just kind of falls over and collapses. And the two of them are just kind of sitting there. And I I don't know. There was just this, you know, Paul, you talk about these little moments that you like. That was just one of these little moments where like, this is a low budget movie, but that's just for some reason really enjoyable. I just, I like how the table broke and that whole little scene, how that played out. Also, before we get into the well thing, I want to talk about my favorite scene of the movie, which happened right already. It happened here. already. Yeah, the alleyway scene. Oh, okay. Well, if that's your favorite, we shouldn't <laughs> skip it. So Joe just comes creeping out of the darkness in this alleyway, 
talks to Tommy and they want to fight. And Tommy just asks, like, Joe, do you just always hide in weird alleys looking for people to fight? <laughs> and Joe's just like, doesn't everybody? <laughs> no! <laughs> Nobody does that! And then Tommy gets his ass kicked. And Tommy kicked. gets his ass kicked, yeah. So he's already... So Tommy yeah. does kind of suck at yeah. fighting, right? Comparatively to the rest. Yeah. And I think this is partly why he's in a bad mood when he goes to the restaurant and sees Rye and Bells. Oh, yeah, because yeah. in the restaurant, they're like, do you want a smoothie? And he says, I'd rather have cancer. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, you came in there for food. In a terrible mood. <laughs> it, it's that angsty college wit. <laughs> He's kind of yeah. always in a bad mood, really. Yeah, yeah that's kind of. He reminds thing. me. A, he reminds me a little bit of Gale. <laughs> <laughs> you mean friend of the show, Gale Murren? Friend of the yeah, show, Gale the Murren. Listeners, you may recall uh, hearing him on the season finale, season one finale of B Movie Mania, where he gave Two Evil Eyes a score of two for no good reason. <laughs> <laughs> He probably wished he had cancer. Enjoy the show, Gail. We deviated a lot there, but that's uh, okay. It's that's all good stuff right there, and I completely agree with it. Let me remind you then what we were talking about. We were just talking about after Tommy walked up to Rye and did a real like Brock Lesnar flip onto the table and broke it, just like in WWE's World Sports Entertainment time. Um, that's what it's not, called. Yep. Yep. And then and then he said, I'm going to fight you. And then the, like, which is physical contact, punching and stuff over at, you know, just the, the well that ate children. <laughs> is, is this why I have in my notes? Ha ha. Jesus belt. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, that I, do not know. I think Tommy put like some sort of like Jesus belt on or something in their like training montage. Well, he's a oh, priest. Maybe. That would make sense. I didn't get that far in my rewatch. But let's okay. let's let's get in, get into it here. Let's talk about the well that at some point has eaten some children. They call this place the well that had children after a few instances of missing kids years ago. Yeah, well, I figured one more wouldn't hurt. Get over here! This well looks pretty awesome. I know I was it does. really, really wasted the first, the very first time I saw this movie years ago, and I apparently I kept making fun of the, how shitty this well is, but, but it's actually pretty cool looking. It is. I know that some of you watched the uh, documentary yeah, yeah. They put it's a lot big. of effort it's into It's like that. fifteen yeah. or eight, like eight foot wide, I think, by like fifteen or twenty feet tall, and they built the whole thing. Yeah, it's pretty big. And Jay, this is another thing that you were talking about here, where you know the little details and the backstory of how things happen. They just built that thing in in Tommy's uh, <laughs> dad's backyard. Yeah, and t- Tommy's dad was going to help. Uh, w- well, he helped build it, and and. Yep. Uh, they said that they were going to move it to the set every day where they had this other location planned where they were going to put the well and they were going to move the well every day to go shoot. I don't know how you could do that because this thing is huge, mm-hmm. but I know it's not that heavy, but it's still a giant prop. And uh, they ended up just saying, you know what? This backyard looks pretty good. Let's just shoot here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like anybody's just regular backyard. Right. Yeah. And you know what's really amazing about that is that I never noticed... It never really looked like a backyard to me until I watched that documentary and found that out. I mean, it really looked like a well that ate children. It did. <laughs> it really looked like you should not let children near that thing. Or or giant World War II German experiments. <laughs> nice segue. So props for that. You know, I'm a sucker. F- I, I'm a sucker for the independent spirit. I don't know how else to put it. But somebody chat me up about this uh, well that ate children and what happens with this with this fight between uh, Tommy and Rye. Well, first of all, it's bad luck to fight there. So they did a really bad thing by fighting there. And right. secondly, uh, Tommy actually gets the best of Rye in this one somehow. I'm sorry, I am. But I think we could talk this out. Nah, talking's for the civil. Let's act like primates. <laughs> Um, and Rye uh, bleeds on the well, and then the well gives Third Reich Jones diabetes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Very accurate. But before, uh, that, before that, we were talking about like prequel movies to this. I would love to see a movie explaining why Third Reich Jones is just carrying a car door by the well. <laughs> well, he does work at a scrapyard. Yeah, oh, a yeah, scrapyard yeah I guess he does. But he's just taking it home. So, he's building a car. Why does he no. have this door? And he looks it's lost. True. He like he walks by the well, and he's holding like directions or something. I, I'm not quite sure what that was. Well, in fairness, Ooh. he kind of always looks lost. Mm-hmm. Pretty yeah, much, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Mike, you're right. Um, 
rye's blood spills into the well, like into the, yeah. you know, down in the water supply or whatever. How would you describe it? It awakens some sort of beast or something. How would you describe it? it moans and groans a bit. Yeah. Mm. It's like deathbed, but a well. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to describe it. <laughs> and then somehow the well taints the water supply because of this throughout the whole town and starts uh, making everyone in the town sick. Not good. The well made some men sick, others it drove mad, but many it killed. Was it the water? None of us really understood what was happening, and most were in complete denial that anything was wrong. Tommy reveals, he goes to work, and it kind of reveals that he works as an AV guy for the college. That's his job. He works at the college. Yeah. And he says in the movie, that means I work in a basement. And just... So everybody knows, I work in in a media resources department for a college. Oh, I yeah. every office I've had for the past ten years has indeed been in the basement. <laughs> so little, there's a little truth there that Tommy is dropping. When I worked for the ADV department at a, at my college, it was also in the basement. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so Tommy's onto something. Do you guys both have crabs then? No, you have the crabs. Oh, I have crabs. Okay. You have I've crabs. got crabs. Yeah. You, you have, crabs. have the crabs. I've got, I've got Tell crabs. us about that. All right, Chris, I've got please crabs. Talk about crabs, please. Crabs, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, do you get that inside joke? I don't think Mike no. gets that one. <laughs> I, I feel like just, I just want to... You can wanna, say it, though, Mike. Let's just let everybody in on it real quick. Let's spend, like, 45 seconds talking about crabs, crabs please. please. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me find the audio. <laughs> no, we oh. won't find the actual tape, but uh, Jay, like, that just... That would be great. Oh, Catch everybody okay, so up. I lived with Chris when back when I was like 18, right? My first apartment, and, and we had a stereo in the living room, and I found a tape, and I didn't know what it was. I just wanted to see what was on it, and it turns out we think it was his brother. I think, yeah, I think it's my brother. Yeah, when he was, I'm assuming like around the age of 8 to 10 or something. I don't know. Yeah. But they made this tele, this radio program. And they recorded themselves, and they were like in a in a restaurant, and so one of the people, kids asked the other kid, "Well, what do you want to have?" And then this little girl goes, "Crabs, please." <laughs> and she sounds like a little child, like she Crabs, sounds like please. one of the children that probably crawled back up out of the well oh, that no. ate children. <laughs> That's oh, the, the quality oh, no. of the voice. Crabs, please. And Jay, don't forget, don't spit chewing tobacco in your hair, girl. <laughs> I think that was James. <laughs> that, that was but uh, we'll just brother. use the hashtag crabs, please, for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Is, is your name Tommy? I, I just spoke to someone named Tommy on the phone. And he was very rude. What? Uh, I needed a TV and VCR for my classroom for a video I was supposed to show. Look, what do you want? Well, I, I'm, I'm really upset. I have uh, an, another class in a half hour, and I need to get a Ass. TV. Excuse me? So, uh, when we see just how shitty an employee Tommy is in this basement, I mean, he's terrible. He doesn't want to give out VCRs or TVs to anyone. And he looks over in his shitty basement, and there are and his basement has crabs, too. They're just live crabs <laughs> that they must have just bought at some local <laughs> fish farm or something. And just set them loose in this basement. And the crabs lead Tommy to the machine. Oh, and and I, I'm pretty sure the machine just makes blocks of Velveeta cheese. <laughs> That's what it was, right? It was cheese, right? It was cheese. It had to have been. They okay. ate it later. Oh. I was confused at first, and then he threw it away. So okay, whatever. And then later they eat it. And it must have been cheese. Yeah. And if okay. you think that you're going to get an explanation for the crabs or the cheese, you are sadly mistaken. It's not going to happen. <laughs> for whatever reason, I really did like the look of that building. You got like. Kind of like grassy vines, like coming through the window, and he's mm -hmm. playing video games f for some reason. And it's again, they they do a good job of just making you feel like you really live in this town and you really go to this college or whatever. Thank you, Debbie. <gasps> Wild dolphins with machine guns invade town, stealing all the hot dogs. Thousands of people die in Pharisee with no explanation. See, Rye's watching TV, and I think. Um, that's where we find out that dolphins stealing hot dogs yep. isn't isn't a fake thing. It's in the news. <laughs> it's real and it's tragic. Which what I loved. <laughs> what was her name? Maggie Axel Rodman, my favorite character of the movie. 
Is that the news reporter's that name? That was the news reporter's name, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's reporting live with WSUX. Hey, and while, while Rye's outside watching that news report, this is yeah. just a little throwaway thing they do. He gets crapped on by a bird. <laughs> but <laughs> Not just any how bird. big of a bird was it? <laughs> it's like... I mean, but the amount of crap that he gets hit with, it's like a garbage can full. <laughs> it's so big. It's like a giant just spunked all over him. <laughs> he just sits there. That's the that's the scene. That's what they use to cut the scene. That he, that yeah, he goes, he goes, oh, big bird. Like, he doesn't <laughs> flinch. He doesn't get upset. He just says, looks up and goes, huh, big bird. And, and Mike, <laughs> I, I feel like we need to be accurate with this. Now that I see my note for this scene, it's not just wild dolphins stealing hot dogs. It's wild, no, there's something else. wild dolphins with machine guns stealing hot dogs. <laughs> oh, did they have? Oh, I yeah. fucking. Yes, they had I just, machine guns. I think we need to be accurate. No, I, we should be. We don't want to. The media has been so fake lately. We need to make sure that we're reading and watching the news and understanding exactly what they say. And if they say the dolphins have machine guns and they're taking all the hot dogs, we got to make sure we know and this. And don't forget, don't forget about the pink ninjas. Oh yeah, the pink <laughs> ninjas are totally everywhere. come into play later. Uh, if we're gonna, if we're on this scene, we might as well mention. Apparently, thousands of people die in Pharisee for with no explanation. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a, a huge town. Yeah. Well, it's probably the water, right? Assumingly, the the water. Yeah, they drink I guess the it was water. water. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. probably just dysentery, really. But that's important to point out because it's not just it's not just the college prophets that are dealing with all this stuff. This is a town wide thing that's making everybody sick. The college prophets are really just getting sick more than dying. Like. Rye is at work and he, at uh, the Sergeant Clucker's restaurant or whatever the chicken restaurant is. Puking. He's puking in the toilet. And then in the stall next to him, I presume this is supposed to be Third Reich Jones, but you don't see him. It is. You just, you see like these heavy boots. And then he just starts peeing on the floor, like all over the toilet. And then it turns to blood. And then it turns to a lot of blood. <laughs> and you know that it's Third Reich Jones because when it when all the blood comes out, he goes, Shiza! Oh, right, right. Oh, right. Is that what they said? I didn't okay. catch that. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So, I thought it was like a cough. <laughs> things aren't going too well. Third Reich Jones has a blue arm at this point, <laughs> and he's peeing insane amounts of blood everywhere. And when you say when you say blue arm, I just want everyone to know that it's like if you've seen Arrested Development, <laughs> yeah. it's like when David when David Cross blew himself. He that's blew what, himself. <laughs> that's Third Reich Jones blew himself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to talk about Professor Holiday's exploding rats, I guess now would be the time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, basically, what's happening is the that Doc Doc Holiday has uh, a fish tank full, or terrarium, I guess is the term, full of of mice, and uh, they're farting a lot, apparently. And then they're rubbing around on the stuff and causing static electricity, and that's making them explode. Which yeah. was actually a pretty damn good effect. It was, and they show you that in the documentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was just clever editing, but really great, really well done. But what we learn is that this apparently isn't normal rat activity. Right. Apparently, I had no idea. Farting rats and static electricity <laughs> don't cause them to explode. I just took it for what it was. But according to Rye, this is not normal. What exactly do you claim is wrong? The probability of those rats exploding is equivalent to winning a lotto. I don't think... See, he's not the he's not the professor, though, so I don't know if I trust him. What do you mean he's not the professor? Oh, Rye's not Rye's the professor. Not the, yeah, because the professor seems fine. The professor's just like, well, you know, they're, they're exploding. This is what happens. They're farting. But yeah. uh, Rye's <laughs> like... Rye, you know, corrects him and... I mean, Rye is good with math. We understand this, but I mean, are farts math? Eh. Yeah. Hey, hmm. this this brings up a really good time to uh, bring up something that was mentioned earlier in the podcast. Um, I need to get up and get a drink. Uh huh. I'll <laughs> okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's what okay. was mentioned earlier in the podcast. Oh, in my <laughs> intro, got it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it actually happened, huh? Let's see how much we can get through before he gets back. <laughs> All right, we'll All burn right, through it. Um, <laughs> We end up at some point here uh, back over at the well that eats children, and Third Reich Jones is there, and he's he's getting ready here to do battle with uh, Sunshine Sal, who we haven't talked about too much yet, but he is one of the oldest college prophets. Yes, he is. He's the mentor. He's the mentor, yeah. he's 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 been around a long time, but he's been gone for a while, so this is sort of his big return scene, and uh, he teams up. Uh, Jay with with Jonah Joe to do battle with Third Reich Jones, but uh, 
Yeah. I don't know. Things things don't exactly go as well, planned here. There's a little bit of a face turn here for Jonah Joe because right. if Third Reich kills Tommy, then Jonah Joe can't beat him up. And that's just so, not sexy. It's just not sexy. Jesus, Mary and Joseph Jones. How am I supposed to beat him up if you kill him? That's just not sexy. So <laughs> the, the two of them start to fight Third Reich, who's, I, I believe at this point, even more blue at this right. point. Blew himself even more. The, the reason they're here, though, because Third Reich Jones kidnaps Bells, right? He right. took her to the well, and Tommy and Rye went to the well. Third Reich Jones beat the shit out of them, and now right. now Sunshine Sal and Jonah Joe have shown up to defend them. And they don't they don't get the job done. Um, no. Both of those guys get chucked into the well, and I believe this is also the scene where, to- where Third Reich Jones puts a rake through Tommy's hand. Yeah. And it's not just. Uh, Sal and Joe here who who bite the dust. Bells. Bells. That was kind of a surprise. Yeah. And he tears out her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just not sexy. That's just not sexy. It's it's not good. But the way I, I want to point out how Third Rag Jones is eventually like tamed, not tamed, but subdued. Uh, is because Rye, who's for some reason got his ass kicked out in the street, uh, pries up a manhole cover and then throws it. I, you literally can't see how far he's throwing. It's like a hundred yards or something. It's ridiculous. He throws a manhole, misses, finds another manhole, and then throws that one and it, and it hits and those, uh, third right. Those Jones things are never really that close together, are they? I mean, he had no, to travel never. for that it's, second one. <laughs> And they're usually not out in the middle of the forest either. <laughs> no. Yeah, it was. I, I really liked that. He threw the first one when I, I was like, "What the fuck?" And it misses, and then it cuts back a little later, and he's prying up another one. So, so this is where shit starts to get really weird because yeah, we have all this stuff going on with the well, and it's it's out of control. People are dead. Rye and Holiday have to they somehow figure out a, qu- a quote an algorithm to save it all uh to try to <laughs> stop the well from sort of taking over the town and you know poisoning everybody it's your solution an algorithm to save us all right the, the well is evil you must counteract the well's energy with the duality of positive energy from the college and from another area of positive land brought to and funneled into this physical world. Chris, you're an algorithm guy. Did this make any sense to you? <laughs> Not one bit. Nope. <laughs> no sense at all. Maybe they should have got some recognition software to help out with it. <laughs> See, algorithms work through some very precise logic. One step uh-huh. follows another, and they're pretty, you know... They're pretty straightforward if you understand the logic of the, the situation. But can can somebody walk me through what the algorithm is and, and what their plan here is to, to fix the situation? Yeah, they got to, like, get a sacred tree, and the sacred tree grows near the well. So they have to go to the well and get the sacred tree. Oh, is mm-hmm. that why they went to the well during the day? Totally missed yes. that. Yeah, and then so then they got to get the tree and they got to plant it somewhere p- positive, which they decide is the college campus. And they're hoping then that all of the good vibes or the good karma or whatever, here's karma coming back, will offset the damage that the well is doing and they can't fight near the tree. Yes. I think that's pretty much that's like the the Doc Holiday gives them a list. And just says, here's a. I believe here's it's a professor. List. That's the t- the proper term. <laughs> professor Holiday says, "Here's a list of things you have to do to fix it." I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, but Mike, the the security goons show up as they're trying to plant this little uh, cute little baby security tree. Security goons, yeah. Uh, and once again, things do not go too well here. No, they beat the fuck out of Tommy and Rye, and. This is what I'm trying to figure out. At what college is it okay to just beat the ever-loving shit out of students for planting a tree? Paul, Paul, <laughs> Paul, you were you were never a student at the School of Hard Knocks. No, but I was a, a student at Heartland Community College, and it was nothing Ooh. like this. <laughs> just leave us be for a few hours, and we'll leave peacefully, I promise. That's not going to happen, Rye. 
There's gonna be no more of your soapbox bullshit. Not here. Just leave us alone. What's that tree doing there? Don't fucking touch it! They don't get the job done, basically. They get stopped by the security goons. They, they can't make it happen. Um, and so they, they go, Tommy and Rye head back to the well that eats children. Uh, and Chris, who do they find there? I don't remember any of it. I watched this really late at night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, you watched it three times. Joe shows up here, right? <laughs> He's not there. Mike's gone too. He needs what? another beverage. Thanks for telling us, Mike. <laughs> Jesus. Jay. Let's throw it to Jay. Yeah, okay. So Joe comes up out of the well. He says he saw the well eat Sunshine Sal. Yeah, so Sal's, Sal's gone. truly Sal's dead. And um Tommy has this book uh, uh, from the guy who started the college and knows about the well and all oh, this yeah, cause stuff. Yeah, cuz he broke into the library. Yeah, he broke into the library and got it. So like, Joe reads the book because it's in Gaelic. This land and the well that eat children are paused for manipulation. For those who can speak, the language steps softly. They basically realize, okay, we can try it again. Yeah, yeah, we can try it again. There's a machine in the ground under the campus. And that's the, the one machine. that spits out the block of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and so they all three sense. go down there. Beat up the new AV guy because Tommy's been fired for no reason. They just kicked the shit out of him because because why not? Because <laughs> they're t Boondock Saints rule, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> the then they all duct tape themselves up, and they like Tommy puts an eye patch on because we forgot to mention Tommy got his eye poked out. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody just gears up. It's a big yeah. You know, like at this point, Third Reich Jones took a couple of the other goons from earlier in the film. He juiced them up on the well, so now they're super evil with him. He's got yeah. a helmet that looks nuts. It, it looks awesome. Like, they put a <laughs> bunch of crap on this helmet, and he just looks like a big beast. It looks really cool. And then, so they're all getting ready for this big fight. Everybody, basically, right? Like, like uh, Third Reich Jones is there. The security guards are, are there. The pink ninjas are there. And they can't forget about the yeah. pink ninjas. Yeah. yeah. Million and Billy are there. Right. Yeah, Everyone those, those are the two that are Third Reich's goons at yeah, this point. Yeah, now, yeah. Yeah, so so some people have switched sides here, and so it's a big, big battle. Midas shows up to help out. Joe is there to help out. It's this huge, you know, sort of Avengers Infinity War style <laughs> clash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, considerably yeah. lower budget. I guess, yeah. maybe. Well, I mean, I Third Reich Jones, I loved how his makeup didn't cover his armpits. <laughs> yeah, so. it's clearly just blue paint. <laughs> yeah. At some point here, we got an explanation as to why he's blue. He's just blue. Well, it's because he has a rare form of diabetes. <laughs> and he has poor circulation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not because he's a super beast. Uh, no. Yeah. Fortunately, our heroes uh, come out on top here, but barely. I mean, they are in bad, bad shape. And Rai's pretty much done, isn't he? Oh, yeah. we should say, too, yeah. Rai actually beats Third Reich Jones. He's... Sneaks up behind him and snaps his neck. The good guys come out on top here, but at a at a pretty high price. In the middle of the forest, mid breath, mid stride, my heart will stop and so shall I. Maybe for the best. I don't believe my heart ever worked right in the first place. Tommy then has to deliver this tree, or Ryan and Tommy have to go to the house of the couple who owns the slaughterhouse, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand this. They had to plant the tree inside of the house for some reason. Yeah. The algorithm is like also a map. Right. So so that's why they had to plant it on the college grounds because that's where it figured the, the all the positivity was. And then for some reason, <laughs> they did it in this house. Probably because it was funny to watch what they had to do. Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody explain to me why Tommy has to deliver a Goldberg spear to a, a, a tree outside of the house? <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> that tree was next. Yeah, well, he the has to next. because Rye was too busy stomping a hole into the house. <laughs> but, like, he gets a running football, like, three-point stance start and spears this tree into oblivion. Well, he can't chop it down, right? He doesn't have time to chop well, it down. There's no yeah, time. And it, and it was blocking the sunlight from hitting the tree that 
had to be planted inside <laughs> the slaughterhouse owner's house. Oh, and I got to no. say, those slaughterhouse owners did nothing wrong in this entire movie. They were no, they were sweethearts. On, they were victims. They were the, were the sweetest <laughs> old couple that just happened to murder animals wait, for food. Wait a minute. They hated the slaughterhouse owners, but the, the soapbox preaching was about people who didn't eat meat. Yeah. Like, what is their Holy fucking shit. problem with slaughterhouse owners? Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? To quote Jesus Christ, irony is fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it, really. I mean, our heroes come out on top. Uh, is there anything that you guys want to mention about uh, our sort of uh, epilogue bar scene here? Nah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're just back at the bar. I mean, everything's kind of reset. Like the the yeah. the well has been put to sleep. They said they did not kill the well from planting yeah. the tree. It only Sequel put time. the well to sleep, and it can wake up again. And our heroes walk off into the sunset. Yeah, but bells. Right. Everyone else comes back bells to is life, still right? Dead. But bells, except for bells. No, I don't think no, so. Man, people are dead. Well, the- no, Lots the town comes dead. back. No, the town comes back to life. Because the minute the tree comes back, all the police sirens turn on, and then the voiceover is like, and then everyone woke up. Except and the police were back, and that was great. <laughs> just and like it was that. just, you know, uh, you know. But Chris, <laughs> it's not all sunshine and hand jobs. God damn it! I wanted to say it! <laughs> oh, all right. Somebody had to. But it's not all sunshine and hand jobs. Our spell could only stop the well, not kill it. Mike, you want to say it too? Can you guys both say it together? Just try it. <laughs> all right. Ready, Paul? Yeah. It's not because all sunshine the well and was, hand uh, jobs. gaining strength again. Oh, no. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Mike, go ahead. No, we, no I already did it. All it's right. fine. All right. Um, yeah, so the well, yeah, like Jay, like you said, the it's well is, is maybe gaining some strength again here. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. What? Nothing. It's you fine. You want a muffin? <laughs> <laughs> Dick. What? 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 It's not all sunshine and hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Rating time. Rating time. All right. You guys have a, a little bit of a choice here. One out of a hundred. Sunshine and hand jobs. <laughs> no. Mike, sunshine or hand jobs. He said we've got a choice. Oh, all right. All right. That's not what I was going to say, but we'll go with that. Chris Hudson. Where to begin? You know what? I'm, it's good to get the low rating out of the way. I thought... <laughs> oh, boy. That, you know, I, I liked it a lot more this time around than I vaguely remember the first time I watched it when I was really, really drunk and forgetful, apparently. I thought there were a lot of really great bits. The characters were fun. Um, and this really seemed like just a bunch of friends getting together and making a movie. And there's nothing more pure, more innocent than that. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, all the great bits in the world just it didn't seem very cohesive to me. I mean, it felt like there was a larger world, but there were a lot of little things here and there that it just felt disjointed to me. Mm-hmm. I think I think in the hands of more skilled filmmakers, this would have been a classic. Mm. But I, it fell a little flat for me. I mean, I laughed, I enjoyed bits of it, but it's a lot like uh, the killing of Satan in that there are lots of little things gr- that are great, but the movie as a whole kind of wasn't. I didn't enjoy as much. So I guess I'm going to give this uh, 65 hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rating scale we're using, right? Uh, that is, say. that is. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to take that out of context later. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, maybe you'll get a uh, remake somewhere down the uh, line that will be more to your liking. Who knows? I'd be, oh, I'd God. be okay with that. Or sequel. I thought the world was pretty cool. I'd like to see some of the other stories that were hinted mm-hmm. at. Jason Halls. Um, well, like I alluded to earlier, I, I don't think I've seen a movie in quite some time where my opinion changed so much from one viewing to the next. Um, probably the last movie would be The Big Lebowski. Wow. But, Whoa. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole other you thing. You hate now. it now, right? It sucks. I hate it now. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I realized, especially after watching the documentary, it's like 15 minutes long. If you guys are going to watch the movie, just watch the documentary. We'll put a link to um, it down below. 
um, I, I kind of like felt like these guys that made this movie like are us, you know, because yeah. we've no, totally. we have done very similar things with what they did here. Like we ha- did a movie late afternoon of the living dead where we come up with crazy mythology mm-hmm. and just characters that can do unusual things. So there, you know, those guys that made land of college profits are, they're all about our age and, you know, listening to them talk, they kind of had the same drive and, um, humility. Well, we're yeah. probably, we probably don't have a lot of humility, but, um, yeah. thank you for the <laughs> shameless but, you know, plug, Jay. Yeah. Um, but so I felt a lot of camaraderie with them. Right. And so, and that was after I saw the movie. Just I, watching the movie on its own, I thought it was just a ton of fun. Like, it's it's ridiculous. They know it's ridiculous, but they have in-world reasons for everything being ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So I, I just thought that, like, it was a blast. I would urge these guys to put this on Amazon Prime. I don't sure, know why absolutely. it's not up there. They should, because... I think a lot more people are going to see it and they might actually make some money off of it. I would say do a sequel. I would be totally, totally into it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it 85 hand jobs. <laughs> well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's a lot of hand jobs. Uh, no one's yeah, doing well, sunshine, are they? No one's going to do it. <laughs> hey, you gave us a choice, Paul. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Mike Hayes hit me. So, like I said, my quick take like, I really like this movie. I think the mythos in this film is, is just fun and it's like let's come up with something weird and something cryptic and just go with it. And it's really fun. I really like that kind of stuff. So I, I really enjoy that. And I think just in general, the movie, the movie's paced pretty well too. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't really, doesn't really d- yeah. dig down too much. Um, though the, the, this, this movie and trying to rate this movie also makes me question the rating system in the sense of who's this, you know, rating for, mm-hmm. I guess it's for the listeners, and if people are listening to this podcast and they're enjoying it, I think that this rating is for people who like, who thoroughly enjoy these kinds of movies and don't just necessarily like hearing people rip on them, right? Right, right. yeah. So, so that makes me that makes my rating go up, right? Because I'm not caring as much about the outsiders. Makes sense to so, me. So, so, Mike, Mike, the view, the listeners just want their hand jobs. <laughs> give well, the listeners their hand jobs mike <laughs> you, you know what maybe i'll withhold hand jobs and give this movie give this movie a total i'm forking out the algorithm here real quick sorry uh, one second uh, 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 88 sunshine 88 nice. sunshine wow. all right wow. it's cool. really nice. fun like i if you like this kind of shit i think you'll dig this movie there's no explosions but who cares you saw hologram man <laughs> <laughs> well yes Paul, uh, what about you yeah you know i mean you jay really you took the words right out of my mouth i mean be, beyond the fact that this movie is a lot of fun to watch uh i saw a lot of us in this film we made a movie around right around the same time we put a ton of blood sweat and tears into it we we didn't have much money we knew that it wasn't going to be the best thing in the world but god's damn it we did it anyway mm-hmm. and so from that perspective you know my hat is off to the hail manor collective for being nuts enough to uh to 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 make something like this work i watched an interview last night with um is his name Thomas uh, Edward Seymour? Is that his name, the guy who played uh, Tommy? I believe so, yeah. 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 Last name Seymour for sure. Yeah, and he uh, it was a more recent interview where he was uh, talking with uh, the actor who played Midas. I think his name's Matt Ford. And they were just talking and they were like, man, this is, it was nuts that we did this. Like, I would never do this today, you know? Just the fact that they put so much time and effort and they built a well that ate children in their dad's backyard and you know <laughs> stuff like that it's it's um i the independent spirit is strong with these guys and i just think that you have to pr- appreciate that just from a filmmaker's perspective um so yeah i liked it a lot you know uh <sighs> If I'm gonna do this, I mean, I might as oh, well. Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean. Uh oh. Whoa. No, I'm gonna go 91 hand jobs. Wow. <laughs> Holy hey, shit. You know, Paul, I wanna say one thing though. One big difference between our movie, Late Afternoon of the Living Dead, and Land of the College Prophets, is that ours was filmed in black and white. 
and which makes it more artistic. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and also less likely to get a distribution deal like they got. <laughs> and by the way, can I just say real quick that I'm so happy to hear that everybody enjoyed it the second time around because the first time when, when we watched this seven or eight years ago, you guys were pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. In 1994, aspiring Ontario film director Erica Benicti wrote, produced, directed, and edited a wildly ambitious feature-length sci-fi action thriller for only $250. (laughs) And Phobe became a local sensation. Boys, we're watching the Canadian cult classic Phobe about a fucking alien guy who does a bunch of crazy shit. Very nice. <laughs> it's awesome. It, it's like a Terminator. The full title is Phobe, the Xenophobic Experiments. Ooh. Yes. And you could watch it on Amazon Prime. Or I have it on DVD if you want to come over. Alright, go over to Paul's. You live in the LA area. He lives at 1926 <laughs> Franklin Avenue. No, so, I do not. But no? don't give oh. my... His phone number well, is 309. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woo-hoo. Hey, guess what, everybody? We have brand new t-shirts for sale, and I'm super excited about it. So, you need to head over to bmoviemania.com, click on the little ad in the right corner, and check them out. We made cartoons of ourselves. Well, Johnny Clip made cartoons of, of us, well, and, it, and it's awesome. <laughs> you, could, you could also follow us on Twitter at BMMM Podcast. Uh, like and subscribe on, you know, iTunes or stuff. Twitcher, not Twitcher, Stitcher. <laughs> Twitcher. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Twitcher's the new app we're coming out with, guys. Uh, you know, and just, yeah, subscribe so these come into your box, you know? If you're listening just from our website, uh, that's awesome. That's right where that link is to get those bomb-ass t-shirts we got now. But also subscribe and it just shows up in your phone and it's or your feed on iTunes or whatever you use it. It's really convenient and you won't miss a, a second because sometimes we put out weird shit, especially when that off-season comes up. That shit gets real weird and you don't want to miss it. And if you if you do like what you hear, if you have subscribed, if you have done these things, and you like us, why not give us a nice review? We could really use it. Give us a give us head on over to iTunes and give us some stars. Yeah, five stars are preferable. One star, that's just not sexy. We may not be all sunshine and hand jobs, but uh, but we'll gladly accept either. <laughs> but you'll get crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Cramps, please. <laughs>